so every person in this category is so deserving of the love and admiration, and we are just incredibly grateful that many of them came back to honor Elaine this year at 2024 Idea World. And so to now Elaine's going to present the 2024 uh, Jack and Elaine Lalane Award. Well, 14 years ago, I accepted the first IDEA Award to someone who has inspired the world to fitness, and, uh, and it was for my husband, Jack Lane, who had just passed away. And then, since then, I have given out the IDEA uh, 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 Award uh, for uh, 14, I've done it for 14 years, and I, <coughs> pardon me, I, <coughs> I'm excited today to give it to one of my friends that I've known for so many years. And uh, this year, I'm so thrilled and so happy to give it to Gilad Chekhov. Bodies in motion. ESPN, Fox Sports, Discovery, and this was seen daily on it it's every day. And he's since then has surpassed Jack's 34 years, and he's been on TV, still on daily, for 40 years. In the, in the mid 90s. Jack and I went to Hawaii as guests of Clyde. Well, beach, we filmed live shows. Gil, now I hear something I want you to know about Galad, which you may not know about. Galad grew up in Israel, and in his early 20s, he excelled in, in track and field. And he was the Kaplan champion in Israel. Wow. And he was interested in going to the 1980 Olympics. He was training for it. And when he came to California, he came to California and trained more in all the best gyms and all the best places in, in LA to, to be, uh, go to the 1980 Olympics. And he had an injury for uh, his Achilles tendon. And so what happened, <coughs> he started he started training people, and he had even had uh, Schwarzenegger. He, he even trained Schwarzenegger in one of his classes before he went to uh, to Spain to make a movie. And in 2007, Galad was inducted into the Fitness Hall of Fame, and <clears throat> he was also in the Fitness Hall of Fame. He a, he received the Lifetime Achievement Award. So he's, <clears throat> he's graced the pages of, of Sports Illustrated, USA Today, People Magazine, and infomercials. Here's more right now about Glot's famous career.
Say hi to Rambo. Okay, we're gonna send it back. First thing you guys gotta know, Amy, uh, I'm gonna break the rules. Okay. <laughs> Four minutes is not gonna be enough. I didn't get to where I got to without breaking the rules. Where can I start? This jacket I'm wearing is uh, inspired by Jack LaLanne. Because those who know Jack knew that he was a man of, besides fitness, a man of fashion. And he sort of was like old Hollywood when it came to going out of the town or going to dinner or going to events. And uh, this jacket is inspired by him. Um, thank you very much, Amy. Thank you very much, Idea. Thank you very much, Elaine and Jack Lelaine, for the inspiration for so many years for so many people. Uh, <laughs> I'm really humbled by this, and I'm really, you know, I, I, so many people here that I know in person, and so many people here that I've crossed paths with over the, over the years, and it's just, uh, let me bask in this moment for a second, please. <laughs> Okay, so um, just a little bit about my story. I, I grew up in Israel. Um, I excelled in track and field and became a decathlete athlete. Uh, I then joined the military. Um, I became a fitness officer in the military. And then I came to the United States. I broke the Israeli record and I came to the United States to train for the Olympics. Now, I went from being track and field to military where we used to carry 40 pound sacks on our backs and run with them for cardio, crawl through the trenches and mud for core work and do 60 burpees before breakfast just to be, to be allowed to get breakfast. Then I head to LA and I try to train with track and field and I injure my Achilles. Next thing I find myself in spandex and leg warmers <laughs> in studios in Los Angeles teaching exercise because that's all I knew what to do. And I worked with some of the, really, some of the top studios in town such as uh, Gilda Marx and the Fonda People and Sports Connection, Beverly Hills Health Club, gosh. I remember working at World for Men. Across the street there was World for Women. This was back in the late 70s. Uh, men were not allowed to be with the women, women were not allowed to be with the men, and that's, and then there was the Jack LaLanne European health spas all over the place, and that was about it. And then there were a few exercise shows, there was the Jack LaLanne show, there was uh, Joni Greggins, there was a uh, few other, Richard Simmons, 
And then I had the opportunity to go to Hawaii. Um, and that's really when it all started. But I wanted to give you guys, really, uh, on my fitness journey, two very short stories. Um, one story is, in Israel, uh, I was in the military. I became a, an officer uh, during the 1973 Israeli war. Um, I had the chance to work with a group of scientists back then, in 1973. Uh, we went over to across the Sinai Desert to the Egyptian side. And we were working with soldiers who were basically all PT, PS, PTSD, okay? Um, and the whole goal of these scientific experiment was to see what does fit. And this is really, really the diapers of fitness and what fitness does to the human body. We were testing groups of soldiers that were in the front lines that were being bombed at every day, and we were actually giving them exercises, and we were giving them fitness, and we were pulling out volleyball courts and letting them play volleyball. And for people that we would come and we would see them like shaking and, and all, you know, inside, intense, all of a sudden after exercise and, you know, uh, team, team sports that we did with them and things like that, all of a sudden you see people smile, and, and their faces light up, and their eyes are shining again, instead of being, you know, dead. And there was an experiment that was done, and was actually written about, and it's a, it's a university study that was done. So, from that point on, I really realized that, really with fitness, I, I, there's, there's a gift to give to people here, not just to people who obviously want to exercise and, and want to get in better shape and lose 20 pounds, but the fact that fitness really is, is in the soul of the human being, uh, more just in the physical way, but also in the mental way, in the emotional way, in the spiritual way, and in any other possible ways. I mean, the fact that you can make somebody who's completely, um, completely immobilized and, and, and take him and put him through some motion and exercise and movement, and you see all of a sudden a smile on the face and a spark in his eye, it's, it's it's mind-boggling. And, and, you know, today we have all of the science behind it, and we know that it works. And thanks to all you guys here, and, you know, this wonderful, wonderful, positive industry that we're in. I mean, when I was hoping to get to the Olympics, really, what was, what was on my mind, besides excelling in track and field and hopefully making it to the Olympics, the Olympic dream of the five, you know, uh, continents being tied together and the human spirit behind the Olympics, to me it was always like what really drove me forward. I, I, it was like a dream, like world peace. People, you know, immersing in love and joy and, and sharing. Unfortunately, the world is not exactly like that. Um, second story I wanted to share with you about the military is my personal story there with track and field. And I guess that has to do with why I'm here today. And that's uh, some of the, uh, anyways, I'll tell you the story. So I was, uh, there was a track meet and I was preparing for it and I was in the military and I was allowed to train while I was in the military. I was already an officer. And my commander said, listen, I'm gonna allow you to go out to the competition. You can go and do it. Okay, two weeks before, he promised me a vacation. Two weeks came, and there was high alert, so I couldn't go. So I came and I said, uh, sir, you promised me a two-week vacation so I can go and train for the, for the event. He said, I'm sorry, but you're not gonna go. I said, sir, you promised. The promise is a promise. Anyway, he didn't let me go. I took the vacation. I went. Uh, two weeks later, um, <laughs> I broke the, the national record, and I became the Israel's national champion. And that, after that weekend, I come into the, uh, to the base, and all the commanders, the officers, they have officers' lounge. They're all sitting there having lunch, and I just walk in like nothing happened. Of course, back then it was a big deal, so it was all in the newspapers, and people heard about it. So, you know, all my officers on my ranks, they kind of go, congratulations, buddy, you did really good. The top guy, the general of the office, walks by and says, court-martialed. 
be at my office in 30 minutes. By the way, congratulations. <laughs> so he uh, he court-martialed me. I was in the, I had to be in the military. Uh, you know, I didn't wasn't allowed to go home or do anything of like that for like uh, 30 days. Two weeks later, he allowed me to go out to another competition. So that's you know. Anyways, like I said, I I, I break the rules only when it counts. When I have to break the rules. Otherwise, I don't break the rules. Um, two more things I wanted to say. Um, my gosh, my, my show is 40 years old. I've been, on, I've been on television here in the United States for 40 years. I mean, I'm standing here. I remember Jack LaLanne being the keynote speaker at IDEA back in the mid-80s, I believe it was. And I was, I, I, I did a Jack LaLanne show when I, back in 1982, but I remember seeing him on the IDEA stage and the inspiration that he was ever able to inflict on people and, and, and the message that he delivered, I went, my God, this man can really move people, okay? And he, I think he was about 70 years old then, okay? And here I am, I'm three weeks shy of my 70th birthday, and I'm, I'm really humbled Humbled, humbled to, 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 to my core. I can't really tell you. I mean, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start crying in a second. But that I'm standing next to this man that was the inspiration for everything that we're doing today, you know, in many, many, many ways. And I'm, you know, I'm his age back then. And I'm going, how the hell did this happen? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm in my freaking prime. I'm just getting started. What's going on here? So, gosh, this is really, really such a such a such a wonderful industry we're in. Really, I I I I, I don't know what to say. It's like the, the the people that you affect, knowingly and unknowingly. In my case, because I'm on TV a lot, unknowingly, I see people and people that come up to me that I've never met before. I don't have the advantage of seeing them in the studio and knowing, you know, what my work, how it affects them, and they walk up and they tell you stories that give you goosebumps. And I'm like, wow, I guess, you know, this work re really, really did something, really does something for people. So, you know, no matter what level I think you're in, I think if you're teaching one-on-one, -on -one, if you're teaching a hundred people in your classes, if you're doing television or Instagram or whatever that, you know, we have today, I think that you know, we never know what we say or what we do or an action that we take, how it affects the other person. You might think, no, it was nothing, but that other person 10 years later will come to you and say, you know what, you don't remember this, but, and I think everybody here has those moments, those buts. My mother, who people who know my show know that my mother uh, at the age, she was, she was a part of my show for many, many years until she passed away a few years ago. Um, and from all of the people that are on my show, that have been on my show, she had the most amount of fans <laughs> everywhere. I mean, they'd say, where's your mother? How's your mother? Like, hey, hey, I, I, what about me? Where's your mother? Okay. Anyways, at 50, she had a bout with cancer. She had stage four cancer, breast cancer, and went through, back then, we're talking 1983, where, you know, a long time ago. Uh, medicine was not as it is today. She went through very, very intense chemotherapy for one year, gained about 40 pounds, and was a total mess after that year. So I said to her, why don't you come to Hawaii, and I'll, I'll exercise with you. So she came, she really, she was basically a broken, you know, she was totally broken, physically, mentally, everything. And I started her off, it was amazing, I mean, I started her off with five minute walk in the park. She couldn't do one push up, she couldn't do one sit up. So I started her off with really very, very gentle, very light, light, light exercises that she did. And I would do it with her three times a day. I said, we're gonna do something three times a day, every day for five days a week, and then we'll rest. She was with me for three months in Hawaii. By the time we were done, she was running halfway around Ala Moana Park in Hawaii, which is about a two and a half mile run. She was doing 20 push-ups, she was doing 30 sit-ups. Two years later, she started appearing on my show, and she was doing 
we shoot when we shoot shows it's expensive to shoot outdoors okay so you have to maximize your day you try to get done as much as possible I used to shoot as much as seven shows in one day okay my mother was doing five shows a day okay and she did that for about 10 years straight okay that's that's her story and I'm very proud to share that and not too many people know that uh, my, one more short story if I can, and then I'll sum it up. And then I gotta go to sleep and wake up at 6 a.m. for the class, I know. Okay, so my dad, who was a World War II, uh, he was born in Berlin, he was Jewish, he had to flee uh, Germany in 1939 with his mother to China. He lived eight years in China and went through the war years then. And can you, I, I'm always imagining my dad, you know, being a war refugee and having these really, really tough, tough, I mean, he lost his whole family in the Holocaust. And, you know, seeing me on TV in the United States, not, not as an attorney or a doctor, <laughs> but a freaking fitness on television, okay? And he was so proud. I mean, I, you know, they're both up there together with Jack. Thank God Elaine is with us to, 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 to witness this wonderful generation of, yeah. And he would love to tell the story that one time he was coming through customs in the United States and the custom agent stops him and he goes, are you related to that Janklowitz guy in Hawaii by chance? And my dad said, yeah, I am, I'm his dad. And the guy tells him, you know what? Tell your son to stop making all these videos. My wife buys every single one of them and I'm going goddamn broke. So that's my dad. He had a great sense of humor. Um, you know, there's, I just want to finish with this. There's, there's so many different elements to fitness and what we do. And nowadays, east meets west, north meets south, yoga. Back in the day, I remember an aunt of mine was doing yoga. I was a kid. Nobody knew what yoga was. It was some kind of an exotic form of thing they do in the Far East. Now there's a yoga studio on every corner. Uh, there's so much available. There's so much integration of fitness ideas, you know, uh, mindfulness, uh, joy, the, the medical and, and, and all the medical knowledge that we have today about what fitness does, not just physically, mentally, spiritually, to the human being, uh, that I'm just, like I said, I'm, I feel like I'm just hitting my stride. Uh, and uh, I think we're, we're all doing a really, really wonderful, wonderful thing. Please, I'm tired of talking. Can we get the DJ to put some music on? Let's get off our seats, please. And let's start moving. DJ, give me something. Where's the DJ? Thank you all for being part of this wonderful, wonderful experience.